Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest release of Manjaro Linux, which came out on the 3rd of January. It's 21.2.0. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Well, I'm at Manjaro's website, manjaro.org. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And as you can see, they've got their three main flavors, XFCE, KDE Plasma, and GNOME. XFCE being their flagship. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the KDE Plasma. And up top here, you've got different editions. If you go down here to the Community Editions, you've got Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, i3, Mate, and Sway. But remember, those are behind. They're on 21.1.2. So what we're going to do real quick is I've already downloaded the Plasma version, and I've got it open in a virtual box. We're going to zip on over to the desktop and take a peek. Now, if you download Manjaro, throw it on a USB, put it into a virtual machine and boot into it, this is the screen you're met with. Right off the bat, you get the Welcome to Manjaro screen, and it says up here, Manjaro Hello. I'm going to pronounce this the way it's spelled, which is something from Star Trek, actually. It's Kronos 21.2.1, and if somebody else has a pronunciation different than that, let me know. Now, down here, you've got a lot of helpful things, documentation, which is a README release info. Let's go ahead and click on that. And right here, it says... This release features major improvements to the Calamari's installer, including file system selection for automatic partitioning and enhanced support for BTRFS or ButterFS or BetterFS, whatever you want to call it. It says the GNOME edition has received a major rework, the update to GNOME 41.2. The default layout has been redesigned to follow more closely to upstream defaults with some adjustments to reduce the pointer travel for users who prefer using a mouse with GNOME. Now, the Plasma Edition has a lot of things that have changed. The Plasma Edition comes with the latest Plasma 5.23 series. The Frameworks is 5.88 and Applications KDE Gear 21.12. They've polished the default theme to match upstream breeze theming. Active elements in the dialog window, for example, light up when the windows get focused. Checkboxes show actual ticks and radio buttons switch on like bulbs. Scroll bars and spin boxes are bigger, as you can tell this one's a little bigger, making them more accessible and easier to use with touch screens, but have been redesigned in such a way to still look elegant on the desktop, laptop, and tablets as well if you want to put that there. The next thing they're talking about is making Plasma fully functional under Wayland is a priority for the KDE community right now. Wayland will enable you to do much more on the desktop, improve performance, increase stability, and new features such as those required by devices with touchscreens. And then they've got information about their flagship, which is the XFCE edition. And it's got the 4.16. The window manager received lots of updates. And the kernel is 5.15 LTS, which will have the latest drivers available to date. They also have 5.4 LTS and 5.10 LTS, which will offer additional support for older hardware. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And when you boot into it, first thing you get is this screen. I want to right-click because I really like one of the new wallpapers they got. I'm going to open this up. And it's just basically a dark version of what we already have. So if you click that on, it makes it a little darker, makes the windows pop out a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that off. Now that we've changed the wallpaper, we're back to the desktop. And as you can tell, you still have your single panel down here on the bottom. You've got date and time. And then, of course, you've got your hidden icons right here, which is your notifications, Manjaro settings manager, clipboard, night color control, lock key status, KDE Connect. If you're not familiar with KDE Connect, it's an application you can download on your Android phone. And then that way you can sync it to your desktop or your laptop. And it gives you a lot of control and functionality over your system through your smartphone. It's not available on iOS yet, but it is coming. The development is almost finished, so you should be able to get it too long for your Apple devices. And then back down to the bottom, you've got internet, USB, battery power, sound, drop-down terminal. You've got your systems up to date. And then Matray, which is your Manjaro news, if you open that up, this is a good way to keep updated with what Manjaro is doing. And it lets you know when there's specific releases that have been brought out, if there's updates like Kernel, System D, KDE Frameworks. And then it lets you know, like here, the Kronos is released. So it's a nice little thing to have, especially if you're on Manjaro. So let's close out of that. 
Then you've got your Plasma browser integration. If you want to do that, you can just click on that. I've used it for quite some time when I was on Manjaro KDE, and it just makes multitasking more efficient by controlling browser functions from the Plasma desktop. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then, of course, here you've got your two desktops, and then, of course, show desktop. Now, you always have the ability to customize this any way you like. If you right-click on the panel, you can go enter edit mode, and right here it gives you a lot of different things you can do here. You can configure your desktop, choose global theme, show activity switcher. You've got more options over here. Click on that. Panel alignment, you can align it to the left, to the center, to the right. Visibility, you can have it always visible. Auto hide, windows can cover, windows go below. And then opacity, adaptive, opaque, and translucent. Let's close out of that. If you want to make the panel bigger, you can ramp it up right here. You want to make it smaller, you can take it back down. And then, of course, if you want to add widgets, just click on that. When it pops up over here, you've got a bunch of different widgets to choose from. If you want any of these widgets, you can add them to your system tray or to your desktop. And if there's a widget you want that you do not see there, you can click on Get New Widgets. And it says Download. Just click Download. It'll open this window up right here for you and give you several different options of different kind of widgets that you can add to the system. That's really up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, and we're going to close out of that. Now what I want to do is zip on over here to the left side. You've got Dolphin File Manager. If you open that up, Dolphin opens up. It's a great file manager. It's not a lightweight. I would call it a midweight file manager. It's got a lot of different options that give you power to do the things that you want to do on your system. Now, it does have a lot of things listed over here. If you don't want to see all of those things, you can turn them off, like Recents. I always hide those. Search For, I always hide those as well. And then you can come down here, right-click in this open area, icon size, bump your icons up a little bit, and that way it makes it easier to see. Dolphin is just a nice, fast file manager that lets you get things done and stays out of your way. You've got the usual suspects over here. You've got your home folders right here. You've got your preferences right here. You can filter, new window, new tab, show hidden files. If you click on that, it'll show you all your hidden files. If you don't want those to show, just click it back off. And then you can sort by name, type, rating. I mean, all kinds of different options over there. Show additional information, configure. You got 32 more actions that you got over here. It just lets you adjust this and really fine tune it to the way you actually want to use it. So that's Dolphin. Let's go ahead and close out of that. We've already looked at Firefox and then add and remove software. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that. And add and remove software, this is where you're going to download everything for your system that you want to use and also update your system. First thing you want to do in here though is go over here to the hamburger menu, click on it, go to preferences. And then you want to go to third party, go ahead and enable AUR support, and then also enable check for updates. Then go to general. Once you're over on general, if you look down here, it'll say official repositories. Use mirror list. You can adjust this to use it to locations that are closer to you. I always just use worldwide. That's my personal preference. But this is something right here you can kind of experiment with and find out how it's going to be faster for you. Once you choose the mirrors you want to use, you want to come down here and click on refresh mirrors takes about three to four minutes once they're refreshed they will now be updated so that way when you do download applications and software you know you will definitely be getting the quickest possible links out there so let's go ahead and close out of that and over here this is pretty self-explanatory this right here lets you know you have firefox installed vlc's installed you can also look at all your explicitly installed software and you can go down through here, and if there's things you don't want that you want to get rid of, you can. Let's say you don't use a music player. You can just hit the trash button. It'll say one pending operation. You click apply, and it will remove it from the system. And then, of course, you can come over here and do searches for software. If you were looking for something like OBS Studio, you could do a search. But because I have not refreshed, it won't show. But if I go to the AUR, it will show OBS Studio. But once you install and actually refresh your mirrors and the repositories are updated, you'll see the OBS Studio that's in the official repository. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then come back down to the bottom to your application launcher. And we're going to open settings. Inside settings, you have many different ways to customize your OS. Let's go ahead and maximize that so you can see. I'm more of a dark mode person, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the dark theme and apply it. It has now been applied. You can change your wallpaper here. You've got more appearance settings here. Let's click on that. And you can come over here, you've got global theme. Right now we're on breath dark, I'm gonna leave it there, but you have breath, breath light, breeze, breeze dark, breeze twilight, oxygen. If none of these themes fit what you want, just go down here, get new global themes, go up here to recent, 
and change that to show highest rated first and it'll bring up the highest rated themes that are presently available for KDE. And you can go down here, find a theme that you like, click the install button. Once it's installed, close this. It'll show up right here. Just click and apply and it will change it across your system. You can do that with application style, plasma style, colors, windows decorations. With fonts, if you want to change fonts, they're real easy to change. You can come in here and adjust all fonts. Click on that. You can come over here, click on font, select the one you want. Click OK and apply and it'll change your font across the operating system. What I want to do is just show you how I can change the size. Presently it's on 10. I'm going to change it to 12. Click OK and then apply and it will change to 12 across the operating system. And then over here you can change icons, cursors, launch feedback, font management, and you can change your splash screen if you want to. Over here, hardware configuration, this is where you would go if you've got an NVIDIA card. You would come up here and it would show NVIDIA. It would show that it's installed or not installed. If you wanted to install it, all you have to do is right click. And instead of remove, it would say install or reinstall. You can install it from there, restart your system. You would have NVIDIA up and going. Kernel, you can come over here and check out the kernel. Right now, we're using 5.15.12-1. Now, when you install this system, when you come over to the kernel, it's going to show the older kernels, going to show the one you have running, and then it'll show a release candidate and probably an experimental. I would stay away from those until you actually got a notification from Manjaro saying, hey, a new kernel is available. You can switch to it. Now, if you switch to that kernel, restart your system and have any issues if anything stops working, all you got to do is come over back to the kernels area, go to the previous kernel you were running, reinstall it, restart your system, everything will be back and going smoothly. And then over here on your settings, you've also got everything from language packs, workspace behavior, accessibility, about your system. Let's go ahead and open that up. We're running KDE Plasma 5.23.4. KDE Framework is actually 5.89 now. QT version 5.15.2. And Graphics Platform is X11. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of settings. And then I'm going to come over to the Application Launcher and open it. Now this is the Application Launcher. It comes with out of the box. If you do want to change this launcher, all you got to do is right click. Go to Show Alternatives. And it'll show you an application dashboard, application menu, or a simple menu. So if you clicked on application dashboard, click switch. Now when you open that up, it gives you a whole dashboard if that's what you want. Now if you right click, go ahead and show alternatives. Go to application menu, switch. You get more of what you see on a Mate or a, a old Linux Mint. If that's something that you're more comfortable with. And then they do have a simple menu. If you click on it, hit switch. And then you open it up, you have the nice simple menu here. It's really up to what you're more into, what's going to make your workflow a lot easier for you. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to the way it was, which was application launcher and switch. One thing I want to point out real quick, when you switch this to dark mode, if you open Dolphin back up, you'll notice that the file folders seem darker. That's because the folder colors do change, which I like over previous versions when you would switch to a dark mode you would still have that lighter green folder i like the more subdued more darker green that's just a personal opinion you may think different if you do let me know in the comments below then we go back over open this back up and you've got all applications you've got development you've got games it's got steam installed out of the box you've got graphics gwynview ocular internet firefox kgit for your download manager you got qubit torrent for your torrent client Thunderbird for your mail client, Multimedia, VLC, Alyssa, Office, you have only Office installed out of the box. Let's go ahead and open that up and take a peek at it. I like only Office. Now, when you first open it up, what you're going to see here is it's going to say create an only Office cloud. You don't need that. This is a totally free Office suite. You can if you want to. I never do. I do sometimes adjust the way it looks. What I want to do is go to settings. And if you're running a dark mode, let's go ahead and change this over to a dark mode as well and apply. And then that gives you a little bit better look. And then on scaling, I like to bump it to 150, but that's me. You know, I wear glasses. I want things that are easier to see. But even on 100, you can still see them pretty decent. Let's go ahead and apply that. And if you open up document, it opens up with a pretty familiar layout. All your controls are up here. You can insert layout, references, collaboration, protection, plugins. But that's just something if you decide to download this, take it for a test drive, you can take a look at Back down to the app menu, settings, you've got add and remove software, which we already looked at, app launcher. If you download an app image that you can run inside of Manjaro, it's already pre-installed, so you don't got to chase that down. System, 
GS Smart Control, Hardware Locality, HTOP. Let's take a look at that real quick. And on this machine, I have issued about two and a half gigabytes of RAM. At rest, with just a terminal open, we're using about 750 megabytes, which isn't bad at all. It's not extremely light like an XFCE that's running at like, you know, three or 400. But still, for a KDE environment, this is running lighter than a lot of the GNOME OSs I take looks at. So let's go ahead and close that. Come back down to your app launcher, back into system, KDE partition manager, system monitor, time shift. If you're not familiar with time shift, this makes things really easy for taking snapshots of your system. If you install Manjaro using the BTRFS file system, you're going to want to click on that right there. Any other file system, leave it on rsync. What you'll do is you'll click next. And what you'll see right here is your hard drive. When your hard drive is listed, you just click on it. Then you would click next. At that point, it would ask you if you wanted to take a snapshot. Take your snapshot and you're good to go. That way, should you have a catastrophic failure of any kind in the future, you can always boot into the system, and if for some reason it doesn't boot, boot up with the USB that you use to install it, go into Time Shift, refresh from that snapshot, and you're good to go, and you can keep right on doing your work. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down to your app menu, then you come down to Utilities, you've got File Light, KFind, Spectacles, your Screenshot Utility, and then of course Sleep, Restart, Shut Down. That, my friends, is a real quick look at Manjaro 21.2.1, the newest release. I think the changes are definitely a step in the right direction. Manjaro is probably one of the most polished versions of an Arch OS that you can get. And in my honest opinion, it just keeps getting better. What do you think? Is it something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine, maybe take it for a test drive? Did you disagree with anything I said in the video? Let me know in the comments below. Before you leave today, do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next video.